you got to know what you're bad at. Um, and you got to know the history that the, the industry suggests that, you know, you're not going to walk away with your money. So... Yes, sir. Welcome back, everyone, to The Fix, live in the Prop Swap Studios, 1490 Sports Betting Radio. And it's the moment we've all been waiting for, the masses around the world, the loyal listeners of The Fix. The time has finally come. Mr. Darren Ravel is gracing us with his presence tonight. Does this man need an introduction? Darren, I'm really trying to pump you up here. Am I doing a good job? (laughs) (laughs) it's too much it's too much i know do less do less um so first of all uh welcome like i said and thank you so much i know you're a busy man you got a few things going on so uh thanks for spending a few minutes with us here tonight well with the way that betting is going and sports memorabilia it's just you know those two topics are things that i really enjoy and uh they are bustling um now you know one of the few businesses both of them that that have really thrived in the last 10 months. It's unbelievable. And I actually, so I helped open up the DraftKings Sportsbook here in Atlantic City at Resorts. And that was, you know, just three years ago now. And it feels like a lifetime ago. And just to see how this has grown in New Jersey alone, you know, I mean, we're, we're, uh, you know, our monthly handle is beating Vegas, uh, and we'll get into that in a few minutes. But uh, I guess just your thoughts overall on how New Jersey has, dare I say, dominated this market early on? Yeah, I mean, listen, uh, I I gave up eight months left on my ESPN contract to join the Action Network just because I felt like, you know, how many times in your career do you have a chance to get a preview of what is to come? What is you know, almost surely to come. And the fact that I was living in New Jersey and, you know, by the time November came around, it was, you know, four months in. And I just even, even my friends who I used to talk just sports with, our texts were more about gambling than ever before. And I just, I just felt like that's where the money was. And I mean, did I ever think that within that by 2020, you know, New Jersey would throttle Nevada. No, I mean, I never thought that it would get that big that fast where you'd have December 2020 with a billion dollars in handle in New Jersey alone. Yeah, it's it's astonishing. I mean, I remember the first month that New Jersey, uh, our handle, I'm saying our, but whatever, it is our handle here. I'm in New Jersey, took down Vegas, so to speak, and everyone in the city and really through the state is like, what just, ha- how did that happen? Like how, why? Um, just absolutely nuts. And I- I'm just going to get right into this here with you. Cause I know we only have a few minutes, but your thoughts on the retail space. So the brick and mortar actual sports books, because I look at October, 2020 handle and I could have the month wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. Over 90% of the overall handle coming in in New Jersey was done mobile. So do you see the retail space lasting five years, ten years from now? I don't. I mean, uh, the TVs continue to get better and better. I feel like there's definitely going to be some loss from, uh, you know, what COVID has trained us to do, which is not be anywhere. Um I don't. I don't know if if sporting venues will ever go back to where they were. I know that sounds crazy, but you know the NFL was losing about one percent a year in attendance. People who were already sick of parking and everything else. Um, well, uh, with the with the sports books, I don't know if you if you misinterpreted me or you were getting to. No, it. no, no. I, I got okay. I got it. Awesome. I just don't think <laughs> people are going to want to get off get up off their couch. Yeah. Um, 
I don't think, you know, not unless they could gain an advantage. If, if the TVs were faster than their home, uh, I don't know, uh, be, as live betting takes over. But I don't think people are going to, you know, some people would say that people would go out more in masks because they've been home for so long. But I think people have been trained more to the comforts of home. And, you know, the, the sports books don't really want their retail to work either. It sounds crazy, but like, you know, when you get someone to bet at a kiosk or do a one-off bet, unless you're making a big bet, you're not putting your license in and they know who you are when you make a mobile bet. Yeah. So the fact that 93% of New Jersey bets in December were mobile you know that's that's why when you go to the when you did go to the Prudential Center, they didn't have sports books. We always talked about kiosks being at sporting events, and the reason they they're not going to ever going to have kiosks is because those are one off bets, and you never you never know who's betting. And you know Caesars and MGM, everyone, DraftKings, FanDuel, they want your information. They want to know as much about you as possible. And in the sports book, it's one off betting where they don't know anything. So I don't I don't I don't think it's in the best interest to have retail books and William Hill and the ones that are retail heavy, you're going to have to adjust. We're talking with Darren Ravel from the action network, the business of sports betting, follow him on Twitter at Darren Ravel, uh, senior executive producer for the action network. A ton of my content is stolen and I communicate this. I, I have this article from the Action Network. Let's talk about it. Action Network does absolutely brilliant work. And we're talking about people not wanting to get off their couches. Um, so I ask you this, how is the consumption of sports going to be impacted both in person and through the content and the broadcast? So in five years from now, am I going to have my fantasy lineup or my player prop bet posted on the jumbotron during a tv timeout like wh- where do we see this down the road i think a lot of it depends on the next iteration of rights fees and who wins um you know obviously nbc now has a deal with points bet fox has their own fox bet murdoch in europe has sky bet and which is already integrated into broadcast um it is kind of weird how you know even through this season that nfl announcers including Al Michaels, of course, can only make tongue-in-cheek references. I don't know when, you know, I assume in the next uh, meeting before the 2021 season, um, the NFL is going to tell broadcasters you now can mention it. it doesn't have to be over the top, but, like, it won't be punishable, by, you know, by a fine if you say something overtly about the spread. People think it's funny. I actually don't. I think it's stupid uh, that – you know, originally the NFL said, well, it'll be when the majority of states. Well, we're at 21 states. I mean, if it's 25 states, is it the majority of states and the majority of populations? Um, I, don't, I don't know, but, but I think it's, in, it's frankly embarrassing that it's not there. Now, when I talk about the next rights fees, if, if possible, if Amazon wins, you got to remember Amazon and Apple now have more free cash than Disney. Um, <laughs> So ESPN is going to, ABC is going to have, might have trouble if they want it. And then if you get the micro, the micro payments that Apple is so accustomed to um, through the app store, if you get the, uh, the, the payments from, from Amazon, the one, one click, you know, maybe, maybe there's integration into betting and that's how they figure out how to pay and beat out ESPN and ABC and whatever. And the incumbents and is that they directly tie game, gaming revenue to your broadcast could very well happen very well happen. Like you said, I think it's stupid that they're tiptoeing around basic phrases and terminology from the sports betting world now. I mean, it is, if it wasn't out of the shadows before, it's certainly out now, not fully, like you said, but man, just the transformation over the past two to three years, and it's growing, uh, I would say rapidly. I think that's fair. I want to throw this question at you, Darren. We talk a lot about amateurs and if they should get paid or not. And this question is running before you crawl, but I'm going to put it out there. When are amateurs going to be able to benefit? And I should just say, when are athletes as a whole, professional professional or amateur, going to be able to benefit and get compensated um, as it relates to the sports gambling world? Well, if, you know, if the revenue comes in, you know, as the revenue comes in, that 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 does 
uh, that is a part of basketball-related income in the NBA, uh, and it's part of the, the salary cap, you know, that, that's factored into revenue. Um, I, so, so overall, they're they're kind of getting a piece of the pie. Um, it's interesting that the leagues didn't get any integrity fees, and Virginia came in to, today and uh, Michigan's coming in tomorrow as far as online betting, and none of these states have, have given the leagues integrity fees, but they have made money on, obviously, sponsorships and the data packages, which, by the way, are complete frauds. I mean, I don't think the, the, the data from the league is any better than a third party. I don't know how no one has ever, no sports book has ever had, like, slowed down data, and then they were disadvantaged when it comes to live betting. I mean, they're just being shamed into doing these data deals. But, um, you know, I don't think players, it's it's hard to put, pay them directly, but they are getting paid in terms of the salary cap in, in, in the sports rise, and, and they're getting basically half these deals as far as that goes. I get asked this question occasionally, and I'm sure you get it. I would, I would guess almost daily, um, regarding when will we have close to 50 states legalizing sports betting, and what's taking New York so long, and what's taking this state so long? And and my answer is, I'm not nearly as educated as you are. My answer is, these states aren't informed these people that are making these decisions aren't informed they don't know what to do with it they don't want more work on their desk and they're just putting it off would that be a fair answer for that and is that an answer for some of the sports leagues that are a little bit hesitant like you mentioned i mean i think it's just politics i just think you know uh i think that what's so strange is that especially in new york you know, New Jersey's destroying New York, partly because New York people are coming to New Jersey. And you would think that after Cuomo gets it right, which is that we're going to do this and it's not unconstitutional and we can put the servers of the current casino at the current casino. So there's, there's nothing that really has to be done. You would think that he would then pick the right system, which is not the lottery system, the one off monopoly Almost every state, maybe with the exception of New Hampshire, where DraftKings is running their lottery, it's a failure. There's no competition. The lines are bad, you know. But there's just no research. And from what I know, he doesn't even. He's not even hearing constituents. He's not even hearing the people under him. He does, he's not having substantive conversations, which I understand while fighting the coronavirus. But now you have a 15 billion dollar deficit. And you have to have the simplest conversations about what best practices are. And so to me, it's just, you know, any, anyone who's seen the country over the past four years can, can believe that politics gets in the way of things. And, and I think that's, that's pretty much where it is. I don't think we're ever going to have 50 states. Um, I don't think Utah ever, ever says yes. Um, I think uh, Alaska will be a challenge. Um, uh and there's going to be challenges still on tribes. There's going to be some, some. I think California might come faster. I think Texas, despite religious views, might come faster. Um, the, but there's challenges with the tribes, and that they don't. You know, Florida's taken a long time because there's their sovereign deal with they own gaming, and they think they should own sports gambling. And there's things to work out there. So I think each situation depends on the politician. It depends on whether there's any tribal conflict. It depends on whether there's any religious beliefs. Uh, all those come into play that make each state unique. I think the one state that baffles me more than New York is probably Massachusetts. I, there, there's literally nothing in their way. The home of DraftKings, and I still haven't been able to get it done. Yeah. Why? I mean, why? In your in your opinion, what what is what is the hold up with it's the hesitation? They, each people, each people, um, uh, each group of people have a different answers. I mean, uh, I think in Massachusetts they just had five different bills, and pe- people wanting different, wanting credit for different things. I mean, it's really frustrating. 
Yeah, it, it really is. And you just look at Jersey and all the other states that have, you know, do- dove in the deep end of this, so to speak, and saying we we want a part of this, we want a piece of this pie, and and the success, the the rewards that they're reaping, uh, I should say, is is certainly. Um, no small amount in, in any way. We're talking with Darren Ravel from the Action Network, uh, senior executive producer for the Action Network, formerly of ESPN. Um, Darren, I want to switch gears just slightly here and just talk about betting as a whole, just get some of your insight uh, before I let you go. And we're live in the Prop Swap studios, so Luke and I have these conversations a lot on air. Luke Pergandy, one of the co-founders of Prop Swap, um, hedging versus selling your bet. And I know this is not apples to apples. Every situation, every bet is different. But when should the listeners out there hedge their bets? When should they sell it? Yeah, I mean, that's a, that, that's a tough question. I mean, <laughs> I was, I was uh, you know, some people watch me as I, I live bet, you know, against my team, um, my Northwestern team, to, and I basically took $68,000 um, at a point where they were winning in the game, I got a couple of people yelling at me. Bad karma. It's always hard, and it's always hard to stop, right? Like, especially with live betting, trying to do things all the time. I, I, I would say uh, you just you really got to be careful. Sometimes. Uh, I've chased un- usually unders. I, that, that's my. You got to know what you're bad at, um, and you got to know the history that the the industry suggests that you know you're not going to walk away with your money. So, um, I would say just this is what I say for for people um, who uh, can't stop or whatever. I mean, listen, just because you, I can tweet in two seconds doesn't mean I should. Um, hmm. Just because you can, you know, make make these bets, and it's so easy to make these bets, there's a reason it's so easy to make these bets. Um, so it's very difficult to hedge. It's very difficult to stop. Um, you should you should just know. Like for example, one of the things I do with people uh, bet shame me is that you know sometimes I'm betting a hundred or two hundred dollars on a game, and people are like, well, what are you doing? You make a lot more money than that. And I'm like, no, that why should I be bet shamed? Right? Like, yeah. I. Don't let the money drive you. Let the bet drive you. You know. So that's what I would say. I mean, I'm trying to, I'm trying to do this now. I'm, I'm even more concerned with, with people in the sports card game, especially some of these young kids who are spending so much money on modern basketball. You know, you really got to manage your bankroll. And and one of the things that helps is, you know, at the Action Network, we have a bet tracker. So it's not if you forget about your bets and you just make them go into thin air. Like I like to look that I lost a thousand dollars in the last, you know, three weeks. Yeah, I like to see that because that uh, my bet size will go down. So that's another thing to just keep to, to manage your bankroll by just being honest with yourself. It's uh, it's easier said than done. I, I know that. And it's uh, it's easier said than done. But as you get experience, you 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 learn a little bit. You learn a little bit how to manage that. Um, Darren, yeah. your 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 thoughts on prop swap and how they're impacting the industry? Oh man, I mean, I think it's 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 great. Um, I always love when people say, you know, someone has like a hundred dollars to win thirty thousand dollars, and they're like, hedge, hedge, and you're like wait a second, don't you understand that, like, <laughs> in order to hedge in this situation, you need to come up with $10,000. So, like, that previously was the main issue, that, you know, if you had a, a small bet, a parlay bet, and you needed to lock in your money, you know, previously, in order to do that, uh, the, certainly the casinos wouldn't put out a cash out. So the only way to do it would be to, you know, back up a Brinks truck. And that's just not a realistic uh, expectation for people. Um, There's a reason you're betting a hundred or two hundred dollars. You don't have that. So, like the idea that um, uh, uh, you know, I I love those guys. I quote them frequently. The idea that you could actually cash out 
give someone else odds that are greater than any sports book odds. Um, it's a pretty cool service. It really is. I'm I'm obsessed with it because there is nothing like it. And I, you know, I, I think the average person, just to touch on prop swap a little bit more before I wrap up. Like the average person just looks at prop swap as, oh, well, I can get out of my bet with prop swap. It's like eBay. But I look at it a completely new way to bet on sports in the futures market. You can now bet on it truly like the stock market and buy low and sell high. And and I still think majority of people don't even realize the potential there. Yeah. No, it's 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 definitely good. It it also gives you, you know, a little bit more confidence to add another uh another team onto your parlay, you know, mm-hmm. um, because if you're almost there, you could, you can make it. Um, I do one off. I don't do, I don't do a lot of parlays because I'm always the guy screaming when I, if I, you know, that I don't get the last leg. Yeah. When you hit four but, or five, but, it, <laughs> but, but, but it is, but it is great to know that you could, you could cash out even if the sports book doesn't offer you that option. Yeah, it's uh, it's a brilliant service. Darren Ravel from the Action Network. Uh, we're short on time, but I'm going to wrap up with this question. Your thoughts on the NFL this weekend? Who do you like? Storylines? Just wrap everything up here into into your final answer. Just regarding, I mean, I'm, I'm going to live bet it because uh, you know I think that I think Mahomes is going to clear uh, concussion protocol. Um, but I also think his toe could be an issue. I think he could potentially start and then be replaced. Um, so I'm going to take, I'm going to put most of my bankroll on live and look how he looks in, in his first possession. Um, obviously it's gone crazy from bills minus two and a half to chiefs minus three based on just speculation alone. Um, I like the Packers in the second game. I think the Bucks defense has been a little bit better than people thought. Um, I think people are just going to be concentrating against uh, uh, about Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady. Um, but I, I actually like the Packers in this game. Um, and, uh, you know, to have them go above three is a little bit difficult, but, you know, I, I, I would take the Packers. And then I would, the other, the total that I, I really like, as, as long as it doesn't go under 52, I, I like the, uh, I like the under on the, uh, Chiefs Bills game. I think Mahomes won't be a hundred percent either through the toe or through his concussion, and um, I just I don't think they they're going to get to you know above fifty, uh, which is weird because you think that Mahomes and Josh Allen can sling it, and but I think that I think that's advantageous if you think that Mahomes is not going to be a hundred percent. Now, obviously a a 50% Patrick Mahomes is better than a hundred percent Chad Henney, but uh, yeah, this, this, these games are screwing with my mind, man. (laughs) I'm going to be doing a lot of live betting. That's, that's uh, another, you know, Avenue that we didn't even really get into, but live betting is the way to go. And that's often my answer when I got it, when I get asked, those questions who do i like what's my picks darren i appreciate it so much man i know you're busy and uh it really means a lot that you were kind enough to join myself and the listeners tonight uh on the fix and the prop swap studios best of luck this week no problem all right have a good one right you too there he is darren Ravel from the action network dropping knowledge on us having some fun shedding light and insight on the sports gambling industry. Uh, Great stuff from Darren. We're going to take a quick break. On the other side, John McMullen, our NFL Eagles insider. It's time to talk about the new head coach on Broad Street. Stay tuned right here on The Fix, AM 1490 Sports Betting Radio.